really hurt Washington Times opinion editor and Fox News contributor Kevin Walling, former Biden campaign surrogate. Great to see you both. Before we even start, I'm going to get this Great out there because, Kevin, you always say this. Many Democrats do. But the numbers are changing. They're getting better. They have declassified and right. gotten rid of so many crimes on the books that used to be felonies that, yes, the numbers are changing. People are still dying in record numbers. The violence is still going up. And so, Kevin, I come to you first. Yeah, Harris, the violence is going up, and it's not just relegated to our cities, unfortunately. It's in our suburbs. It's in our rural communities. So this is a red and blue issue. We talk all the time about these rising rates in the cities, and these uh, numbers are horrifying. And I'm a Democrat on, on your panel that supports law, inform uh, law enforcement, that supports surging resources to the Department of Justice, to our prisons. And that's why I have such a problem with what the, Dem the Republicans just passed with their debt program that would, you know, slash 11,000 jobs from federal law enforcement, cut border protection. We see a surge in violence coming across our border. Again, I'm a Democrat that is okay. realistic with the problems at the border. That Republican debt program would cut 2,400 border security agents. So I, I we've got to have a get, realistic conversation about crime in our community, and we've got to surge resources, not just to law enforcement, but to the Justice Department as well. I want to get well. Charlie's voice in here, and then you two can go back and forth because there's some apples and oranges to what you're saying. Charlie. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't really actually know what you're talking about, but uh, we do know this, that Democrats have, have uh, been the party that has supported, no, no, nobody wants to live in crime-ridden places, whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, but you're not going to find any sort of Republican or conservative policies that leads to this. These are Democrat policies, that, and, and, they have, uh, and they've been in place for decades, and if you look at the trend lines over the decades, they have gotten worse and worse and worse, and it's why you have so many people, particularly Democrats, living in Democrat-run places, living in absolute squalor, living in fear in their own homes, and, and the idea that this is a problem that affects rural communities, th that's just not true. Uh, you know, it, it, you know I, I live in a rural community. This is not a, a plague that is happening in rural communities. All right, we'll move to this. Police officers also under siege. The Fraternal Order of Police reports 135 officers were shot in the first four months of this year. That's up 52% from the same time in 2020. The union also reports there were 38 ambush-style attacks. Kevin, I go back to you, and, and I know you brought up the debt ceiling fight. Glad to see that the, the president is actually going to sit down with Republicans now, and maybe we all can learn every single line item that they're going to talk about and fight about because they'll be negotiating so we pray to keep us from defaulting as a country that's on your side because your guys sat out for so long so i get that you want to talk about what's in there but let's talk about what's happening to police the fop is really facing a headwind in all this how can they hire more cops with the rhetoric in this country well, we need to change that rhetoric, Harris, and that's why I, I am so passionate about this issue. Just in two weeks in D.C., we honor uh, our fallen officers uh, at the police memorial every year. The president will be there, uh, and we need to change this narrative around law enforcement. But listen, it doesn't change on both sides with regards to, you know, Donald Trump out there saying he wants to defund the FBI. You had the leader of the Republican <laughs> Party using that language that he wants to destroy federal law enforcement when it comes to defunding the <laughs> FBI. So we have that issue on both sides of the aisle. I, as a Democrat, fundamentally you know, dismiss, deny, put down any means by which Democrats are out there saying we need to defund the police, we need to surge resources, and we need to have that conversation as part of the debt right. negotiations that are going on. Uh, uh, Charlie, do you want to respond? Yeah, no, no. The, the notion that somehow Democrats calling to defund police who are trying to respond to actual crimes in actual cities and uh, trying to make communities safer is somehow akin to the discussion that President Trump and others have had about the politicization of the FBI is absolutely absurd and proof that you don't actually want to address the real problem, which is that Americans are getting killed every single day in cities that are represented by Democrats living under 
democratic policies for decades, uh, and, and it just shows a callous disregard for the actual problem. The issue with the FBI is a it's completely It's not a disregard for the actual uh, problem, Charlie. Uh, situation. It's and not. By the way, the FBI he let you, also he let you is talk. not who you call. When you call 911 because somebody broke into your house or somebody's about to murder your child, you don't call the FBI. You call the local police department. And Democrats want to defund the local we police do department yeah. that's supposed we to do respond. Have you talked to Brandon Johnson? Kevin, have you talked with him? I, I, maybe I'm you called him to, to the congratulate him. He's so much farther left than the mayor of Chicago who left that place in a bloodbath, Lori Lightfoot. He's so much farther left, and he has talked about defund, and he has talked about these types of reforms that are not working and soft on crime policy, so on, so on and so forth. Well, this um, Democrat but, didn't support him, Harris, so. <laughs> well, you don't live in Chicago. Uh, that's true, and <laughs> so I haven't talked to him. I get that, but, but you know who he is, and you know who he is because the Democratic convention is going to happen in that very dangerous city. So I know you know it's on the map. Okay. We'll they'll move have forward. security, though. I uh, assure you, Eric. Oh, no, they'll have security, of course, and they're building of Obama's they and they enormous presidential library there and kicking out a bunch of people in different communities to be able to make room for that expensive beast. But I get you. I get you. You don't live in Chicago. Good to see you. I'll bring you both back. Thank you. Thanks, Harris.